Hello everyone. Welcome to NJW classes. So today we will going to discuss the second lecture of vectors. So if you didn't have uh, read it out the first lecture, then please visit the first lecture and read out the basic terminologies in vectors, and then comes up to this particular lecture and then watch the complete view. Okay. So in this particular chapter uh, lecture, we will going to discuss is about the parallelogram law of vector additions and different cases regarding the parallelogram law of vector additions. Okay, and then we will see about the components of vectors, and then we will look after for the vector products. And in the previous lectures, we have already discussed about uh, the basic representation of vectors, types of vectors, and uh, triangle law of vectors. Okay, unit vectors, displacement vectors, and uh, how to calculate the value of vectors, how to calculate a vector in the direction of a unit vector, how to calculate a unit vector in the direction of a vectors. Right. So all these terms we have already discussed. Okay. So if you didn't have read it out all those terms, then please watch out the lecture first of the vectors initially, and then comes up to this lecture. Okay. All right. So parallelogram law of vector addition. Okay. So let's see what is the parallelogram law of vector addition. So vector addition. I think in the last class we have already discussed about the vector addition, right? So what is vector addition? Vector means addition means vector addition means vector resultant. Correct. Vector resultant means it is the net impact of all the vectors, right? So vector addition means vector resultant means it is the net impact of all vectors. The net. Impact of all vectors. Correct. Okay. So now, what is the addition definition of the vector parallelogram law of vector addition? So it is simply that if two adjacent sides of a parallelogram represents two vectors in the outward direction, then their resultant is represented by the common diagonal of the respective vectors in the outward direction. Correct. So if two sides of a parallelogram, so I am having a parallelogram A B C D. Okay, so let us suppose two adjacent sides. So let us suppose D A and D C are two adjacent sides, and they are representing two vectors. Correct. So let us suppose this is my A vector, and this is my B vector. Correct. So if two adjacent sides of a parallelogram represents two vectors in the outward direction, then their resultant is represented by the common diagonal of the respective vectors in the outward direction. So what is their common diagonal? So this is what their common diagonal is. So a vector and b vectors resultant is represented by this particular diagonal vector. Correct. So this diagonal vector will be the resultant of a vectors and b vectors. Correct. So what is the parallelogram? So parallelogram is the one whose opposite sides are equal and opposite, right? So that is what we will call as parallelogram. So this side and this side must be equal and parallel. This side and this side must be equal and parallel. Okay, so do you understand the parallelogram law of vector addition? So, if two sides, adjacent sides of a parallelogram, represents two vectors in the outward direction, then the resultant is represented by their common diagonal in the outward direction. So, R vector is the vector resultant of A vectors and B vector. Correct. So, I can simply say that by parallelogram law of vector addition, R vector can be simply equal to A vectors plus B vector. Is that clear to all of you? Okay, so R vector is simply given by A vector plus B vector. Now we have to prove that. Okay, so this can easily proved by triangle law. Okay, so this can be easily proved by triangle law of vector addition. Okay, so in the previous lecture, I have already uh, explained you what is the tri triangle law of vector addition. So, if you want to get to know about the triangle law, just visit the previous slides. Okay. So, yeah. So, in this particular triangle ADB, okay. So, I think AB is parallel to DC, right? Because it is a parallelogram. So, opposite sides are parallel as well as equal. So, AB is parallel to DC. Okay. So, AB is parallel to DC, and AB is also equal to DC, right? So it means that DC vector must be equal to AB vector. Okay, so DC vector is B vector. So AB vector can also be equal to B vector, right? Two vectors having same magnitude and same directions are equal vectors, right? So in this particular triangle, 
Which triangle? ADB triangle. Okay. So now in triangle ADB. Okay, by triangle law of vector addition. What is the triangle law of vector addition? If two adjacent sides of a triangle uh, represents two vectors in the same sense, then the resultant is represented by the third side, but in the opposite sense, right? So in this triangle ADB, I think A vector and B vector are the vectors which is representing the same sense, like that, correct? But R vector is representing the opposite sense vector like that, correct? So definitely I can say that by triangle law, R vector can be equal to A vector plus B vector, correct? That is how I can define the triangle law of vector addition, okay? Now we have to find out the magnitudes, okay? So this is what the vector representation of the parallelogram law of vector addition, R vector can be given by uh, it is the resultant uh, will be represented by the diagonal if the two adjacent sides will represent two vectors okay on a parallelogram now we are required to find the magnitude of this r vector correct so we are required to find the magnitude of this r vector right so basically here i am having this vector is basically what b vector so its magnitude is b means ob uh, oa in this case will going to be equal to b and OD in this case will going to be equal to A, correct? So OA is equal to B and OD is equal to A, right? And DB is also parallel to OA, so DB is also equal to B. This is also equal to B. So we are now required to find the length of the diagonal. Okay, so length of the diagonal OB, that is going to be your R. Correct. So how are we going to find out the length? So see, uh, this OD is equal to AB, right? Because they are the opposite sides of the parallelogram. So OD is equal to AB is equal to A. Why? Because they are the opposite sides of the parallelogram. Correct. So now this is uh, OD is equal to A. Okay, so AB will also be equal to A, right? So now in this triangle ABC, now in triangle ABC, what I can say, I can say that sine theta, okay? So sine theta can be equal to BC by A, right? Sine theta can be equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse, so that is going to be BC by A. So from here, this we can say that BC can be equal to A sine theta, correct now again in the same triangle cos theta can be equal to what cos theta can be equal to base upon hypotenuse so base will be ac upon hypotenuse is a imply ac can be equal to a cos theta correct so i am having the value of bc i am having the value of ac right and i also have a value of oa that is going to be b correct so now in triangle obc in the bigger triangle obc have you seen that so now in triangle, in bigger triangle, OBC. So in triangle, OBC, I can apply Pythagoras theorem, right? So by Pythagoras theorem, what I can say, I think R square can be equal to BC square plus OC square, right? R square can be equal to BC square plus OC square, right? See the bigger triangle. Now, R square can be equal to BC square, right? So BC, what is the value of BC of calculated? BC is equal to A sine theta, correct? So put the value of BC, so it is going to be A sine theta ka whole square plus OC. What is OC? OC is going to be OA plus AC, right? So OC is going to be OA plus AC. A whole square, correct? So now I can say that R square can be equal to A square sine square theta plus OA. See the triangle once again. What is OA? OA is definitely equal to B, right? So from this triangle, I can say that OA can be equal to small b and AC can be equal to A cos theta, right? So OA is equal to B plus AC can be equal to A cos theta ka whole square. Correct. So R square can be equal to A square 
sin square theta plus we can apply the formula for a plus b ka whole square right so what is the a plus b ka whole square a plus b ka whole square can be equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab correct so i can apply this over here so my a is b and my b is a cos theta so it should be b square plus a square cos square theta plus two times of ab cos theta correct so now what i can do i can simply take the common okay so from this term and this term take the common a square out so r square can be equal to a square can be taken as common out so we are having sin square theta plus cos square theta plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so r square can be equal to a square and sin square plus cos square is 1 plus b square plus twice of ab cos theta okay so what is the value of r so r can be simply given by under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta correct so that is how we can find out the magnitude of the resultant of two vectors which are actually outward from a common point as well as representing the adjacent sides of a parallelogram right or you can say that any two vectors which are actually representing outwards any two vectors which are actually outwards suppose a vector and b vector okay which are outward from a particular point and having some angle theta so the vector resultant okay of these two vectors r vectors can be simply given by under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta correct and what is this r vector this r vector must be the diagonal vector of the of their uh, common diagonal vector of this a vector and b vector correct and what is the magnitude under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta correct so for example suppose i am having a vector uh, suppose I am having 3 over there, okay, and another vector I am having suppose 4 over there, and suppose the angle between them is 60 degrees. Correct. So I just need to calculate the resultant of these two vectors 4 and 3. So let us suppose R vector will be my resultant. So if I calculate the magnitude of R vector in this case, so that is going to be under root of A square, right? So let us suppose this would be my A, let us suppose this would be my B. So apply this formula a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. So a square means 4 ka square plus b square means 3 ka square plus twice of ab means twice of 4 into 3 into cos 60. Correct. So r can be equal to under root of 4 ka square is 16 plus 3 ka square is 9 plus 2 times of 4 3 is 12 cos 60 is 1 by 2. So 2 to cancel out. So what we are having? R is equal to under root of 16 plus 9 plus 12. So R can be equal to what is that? Under root of 25 plus 12. So that is going to be 37. Correct. So that is how we can apply this formula to calculate the vector resultant. All right. Okay. Next, you have to see some special cases. Okay, so the first special case is when two vectors are parallel to each other, like this example a vector and b vectors are parallel, correct? So, if two vectors are parallel, so what I can say theta means angle between them must be 0 degree, correct? So, resultant can be simply given by under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos 0. And cos 0 value is going to be 1, correct? So that is under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab, right? So resultant is basically under root of a plus b ka whole square, correct? So resultant is definitely going to be equal to only a plus b, right? So resultant in this case is simply given by the sum of both the vectors, sum of the magnitudes of both the vectors. Correct. So when two vectors are parallel, the resultant is simply given by a plus b, where a and b are the magnitudes of two vectors. So it is simply given by the sum of the magnitudes of two vectors. 
correct so like in this example suppose 2 newton and 4 newton forces are applied so net force must be going to be equal to what 2 plus 4 so it is going to be simply 6 newtons correct next when two vectors are anti parallel so when two vectors are anti parallel what is the angle between them that is simply 180 degrees correct so what is the formula resultant can be equal to under root of a square plus b square plus 2 a v cos 180 right and remember that cos 180 can be equal to minus 1 cos 180 can be equal to minus 1 so resultant can be equal to under root of a square plus b square minus 2 a b so it is going to be under root of a minus b ka whole square correct so resultant can be equal to mod of a minus b why mod because mod is used because if a is greater then it would be a minus b if b is greater then it would be b minus a correct so resultant is simply given by a minus b or b minus a which when it's greater the resultant will be on that side right so suppose if magnitude of a is greater than magnitude of b right so definitely resultant will be along a vector correct so those whose magnitude is greater the resultant will be along that particular vector correct so in this example three newton and five newton forces are there so which is greater this is greater right so resultant must be on the five newton force okay and what is the resultant resultant is simply a minus b right so it is higher minus lower so it is going to be equal to two newtons right so if forces are opposite to each other or vectors are opposite to each other the resultant will be simply given by higher magnitude minus lower magnitude and resultant will be in the direction of the vector of higher magnitudes correct next case when two vectors are perpendicular to each other so when two vectors are perpendicular like a vector and b vectors are perpendicular so angle between them must be 90 degrees right and cos 90 must be equal to 0 so resultant is simply given by under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos 90 and cos 90 is 0 so resultant is simply given by under root of only a square plus b square so that is what my resultant is when the two vectors are perpendicular to each other correct so like that four and three newtons are perpendicular to each other so where does the resultant resultant will be somewhere in between them so resultant's magnitude is simply given by under root of three k square plus four k square correct so resultant's magnitude will be simply under root of three k square is nine plus four k square is 16 so that is under root of 25 where it is five correct so like that we can understand very well the cases special cases the fourth special case is when the angle between the vectors is 120 degrees okay suppose this angle is 120 degree so what is cos 120 so cos 120 is going to be equal to minus 1 by 2 right so if i calculate the resultant so it is going to be equal to under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos 120 degrees correct so r should be equal to under root of a square plus b square minus plus 2ab into cos 120 is minus 1 by 2 correct so 2 to cancel out so r must be equal to under root of what is that 2 and 2 cancel out a square plus b square minus of ab correct so this is what I am having the resultant. Okay. And now in this case also, if A is equal to B, mean both the vectors is having the same magnitudes, right? So if A is equal to B, then R can be equal to under root of A square plus B square is also equal to A square minus A B is also equal to A square. Correct. So A square A square cancel out. So R can be equal to root A square can be equal to A only correct so that is what i am having the resultant when two vectors are at 120 degrees okay 
so these are the practice problems so just try out all the problems and find the magnitudes of the resultant force so remember that the magnitude of the resultant or the resultant is always lying between two vectors okay so the resultant of two vectors always lies in between them okay so in this first set the resultant r is r vector so my a is also 10 and my b is also 10 and my theta is 60 degree so resultant is simply given by under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta right so we can just apply the formula under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta to find the resultant in all the cases so in the first case under root of a square a square means 10 ka square plus b ka square is again 10 ka square plus 2ab 2ab means 2 into 10 into 10 into cos 60 correct so that is going to be equal to r is going to be equal to 10 ka square is taken as common out so 10 is taken as common out so here we are having 1 plus 1 plus 2 into 1 by 2 correct so that is going to be equal to 10 times of this 2 to cancel out 10 times of root 3 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is root 3 correct in the second case resultant will be like that so let us suppose a will be 20 and b will be equal to 10 right so the second case resultant is given by under root of a square means 20 ka square 400 plus 10 ka square means 100 plus 2 ab 2 ab means 220 into 10 20 into 10 is 200 into cos 30 cos 30 is root 3 by 2 correct so can i calculate it directly cos 30 is equal to root 3 by 2 so resultant can be equal to so 100 can be taken as common out so 10 can be taken as common out so what we are having under root of here we are having 4 plus 1 plus to do the 4 into root 3 by 2 so 2 ones are 2 to do the 4 correct so resultant can be equal to 10 times of under root of 5 plus 2 root 3 so this is my resultant's magnitude in the second case. Correct. Right. Now the third case, 5 and 5 are at 90 degrees, right? So this is a special case. So in the right, 90 degrees is right. The resultant is given by only under root of a square plus b square. So the resultant is simply given by under root of a square is 5 ka square plus b square is also 5 ka square. Correct. Right. So resultant is given by 5 is taken as common out. 5 root 2. Correct. Yeah, in the fourth case, 10 and 5 newtons we are having. So resultant will be somewhere between them. So its magnitude is simply given by under root of a square. So a square is 10 ka square plus b square is 5 ka square plus 2ab. 2ab means 2 times of 5 into 10 into cos 37. Right. And remember that cos 37 is equal to what? Cos 37 is equal to 4 by 5. So now put up all the values. So R can be equal to under root of 100 plus 5 ka square is 25 plus 52 is 100. Cos 37 is 4 by 5. Correct. So that is now going to be 5 ones are 5, 5 twos are 10. Okay. So resultant is equal to under root of 100 plus 25 plus 80. Correct. So that is going to be equal to under root of uh, 100 plus 80 is 180. 180 plus 25 is equal to what? Under root of 205. Correct. So that is what my resultant is. So this is how we can find out the magnitudes of the resultants in each of the following cases. All right. By using the parallelogram law of factor addition. But the problem with the parallelogram law of vector addition is that it is applicable only for the two vectors, right? So now we will going to learn a technique uh, by which we can also find the resultant of three vectors. Okay, let's see about it. So that is the components of vectors. So what is the components of vector? After taking the components, we will be capable of calculating the vector resultant of more than two vectors. All right.
So let us see what is the component of a vector. So component of a, any vector can be taken in the uh, in the along any two perpendicular axes such that all lie in the same plane, right? So components of any vector uh, can be taken along any two perpendicular axes such that all lie in the same plane, right? So suppose I am having a vector a vector, correct? So I can take its component along any two axes which are perpendicular to each other. The axes must be perpendicular to each other. So this is my axis one and this is my axis two, right? So I can take its component along any two axes, but the axes must be perpendicular to each other, right? So these two axes must be perpendicular to each other, right? So now what is the meaning of component? Basically, we have to understand that, okay? So component means the impact, okay? Component means impact of that particular vector along these axes, okay? So suppose you are applying some force over there, like a vector force you are applying, and you want to know that what is the impact of this force along the horizontal axis, axis two, and along the axis one. Then we will use the concept of components, right? So let's see how to take the components. So for taking the components, just draw it like that. Okay, so this is my A vectors magnitude A, right? Let us suppose I know the angle with the axis two. So let us suppose the angle with the axis two is theta, okay? So in this particular triangle, let us suppose zero, let it be A and let it be B, okay? So now in triangle A, O, B. So if I apply sine theta, right? So sine theta can be equal to what? A, B upon A. Sine theta can be equal to A, B upon A, right? So A, B can be equal to A sine theta. A, B can be equal to A sine theta, correct? And now again, if I apply cos theta in this triangle, so cos theta can be equal to what? Cos theta can be equal to OA upon A. So OA can be equal to A cos theta, correct? So this OA can be equal to A cos theta and AB can be equal to A sine theta. And AB is parallel to this, right? AB is parallel to this particular length. So that length can also be equal to A sine theta, correct? So if I again draw this particular axis like that, and this is my vector, A vector, correct? And this is my angle theta, right? So what is the value of OA? So OA is along the axis two. So OA comes out to be what? OA comes out to be A cos theta, right? So axis two component of A vector can be equal to A cos theta. And what is the value of AB? AB comes out to be A sine theta, so it means that this length is parallel to AB simply. So this axis one along axis one, the component will going to be A sine theta. Correct. So now what is the meaning of components? Component means what is the impact of the particular vector along the two perpendicular axes, right? So A vectors is having A cos theta component along horizontal and it is having A sine theta component along vertical. So that is what the components of a vector A vector. Correct. And remember that once you have taken the components, then you have to remove this particular vector from this position. Okay. Either you can take the vector itself or either you can take the components itself. You cannot take both the things simultaneously. All right. So either you can take the components or either you can take the vector itself. Don't take both the things simultaneously. Okay, so you can also remember uh, like that that, uh, the, that the axis where you are having the angles. Okay, so on that axis you are having the cos component, and on the other axis where you are not having taking the taking the angle theta. So on that axis you will going to take the sine component. Correct. Another example, if I am going to take suppose these two vectors, these two axes I am having, and suppose my vector is like that. This is what I am having, suppose, uh, 10 Newton's force. And this angle is, suppose, 30 degrees, correct? So if I want to take its component, so see, uh, first of all, I will check that from where the angle is given to us. So I think from vertical axis, I have given the angle, right? So the 10 will have the component in the vertical direction will be 10 cos 30, okay? 
and here I am having the component 10 sin 30. So the axis from which I am getting the angle, so on that particular axis, the, the component comes out to be in terms of cos, and on, on the other one, the component comes out to be in terms of sine. Right? So that is how I can take the components of a vector. So on the basis of that, we have to find the resultant of all the forces acting on these particular examples, right? So see in the first example, four Newton is vertically upward, three is verti horizontal, right? So I can simply take the components of five Newtons, right? So if I take the components of five Newtons, so how it can be? Five component is here is, here the angle is theta is known, right? So here it is five cos 37, and here it would be five sine 37. Correct. So now what I can say. Mm -hmm. So now in this particular box, what are the forces we are having? Here we are having three newtons. Here we are having four newtons, right? And now after taking components, we don't have to take the original force because we have to remove the original force, five newton force, right? Because we have already taken the components. So either we can take the components or either we can take the force itself, right? So five sine thirty seven. So what is sine thirty seven? Sine thirty seven is three by five. So here I am having 5 times of 3 by 5, right? Why? Because remember that sine 37 can be equal to 3 by 5, correct? And here I am having what? 5 cos 37, so cos 37 is 4 by 5, correct? So here I am having 5 times of 4 by 5, all right? So now what happens? 5, 5 cancel out. This 5, 5 cancel out. So what we are left with? Mm -hmm. So here I am having 3 Newton force. Uh, here I am having 4 Newton force. Here I am having 4 Newton force. And on the left, I am having 3 Newton force. Correct? So have you seen that? See, in horizontal direction, 3 Newton is towards right, 3 Newton is towards left. So when two forces are in opposite directions, we will subtract them. Correct? So 3 minus 3 will going to be 0. And in upward direction also and downward direction also, we are having the equal forces. So 4 minus 4 will also be 0. So the first case, the resultant force must going to be 0. Clear? So that is how the problems become easier for us with the help of the components. Correct? Now second example. Okay, so this force is going to be 10 root 2. So if I take its components, so here I am having 10 root 2 cos 45. And here I am having 10 root 2 sine 45. Right, so that is going to be 10 root 2 cos 45 is 1 by root 2. Correct. So root 2 root 2 cancel out. So that is going to be 10 newtons. Okay, and this is going to be equal to 10 root 2 into 1 by root 2, so root 2 root 2 cancel out, so that is also 10 newtons, correct? So in this particular block, if I say, then towards right, we are having 10 newton force, uh, towards left also, we are having 10 newton force, upward also, we are having 10 newton force, right? And downward also, we are having 10 newton force, correct? So again, we know that when forces are opposite, then we will subtract them. So 10, 10 will cancel out, Vertical tension will also cancel out, so resultant force must going to be C. Correct? So that is how the components will going to help us in calculating the resultants. Next question we are having. In which of the rectangular pairs uh, may be the components of a 30 Newton force? Okay. So which of the following pairs may be the component of a 30 Newton force? So remember that, uh, suppose you are having a resultant like that, correct? And suppose if you are taking its components, so let us suppose that its component, here its component, and here I am also getting its component, right? So let us suppose uh, here horizontal component is A and vertical component is B. It means that either I can apply the force or either I can apply the components. It means that if you apply the components A here, and if you apply the component B here, so the resultant produces by these two components, the resultant produces by these two components will be exactly same as R vector, right? 
the resultant produces by these two components will be exactly same as r vectors right so i can simply say that r must be equal to under root of a square plus b square correct so this is actually the relationship between the vector and its components magnitudes correct so suppose r is my vector and a and b is its components in horizontal and vertical or in two perpendicular axes so we can simply say that r must be equal to under root of a square plus b square or we can say that r square can be equal to a square plus b square clear r square can be equal to a square plus b square so now just check out that in which of the cases uh, this following situation is being established so let's see the first case the components are 5 and 12 right so is it possible to have 5 square plus 12 square is equal to 13 square yes of, of course because 5 square is 25 plus 12 square is 144 that is equal to 13 square so this is going to be 169 is equal to 13 square so definitely 13 square is going to be equal to 13 square right so it means first will be my correct answer first and uh, 5 and 12 newton's forces will together as a component forms a resultant of 13 newton force correct so that is how you have to give up the answers okay next we have to see is a multiplication of a vector so multiplication of the vectors uh, we will going to study in two parts that is first is a dot product or scalar product of two vectors and second is the cross product or vector products of two vectors right so what is the difference between them the dot product or scalar product means uh, the output quantity okay so whatsoever we are getting after this product that is the output right so output must be a scalar quantity right so output must be a scalar quantity and the cross product or vector product what we can say the output must be a vector quantity so that is the difference between these two kinds of the quantities the first is a dot product or the scalar product means the output will be a scalar quantity and second is a vector product or the cross product it means output is a vector quantity so let us now discuss these vectors one by one yes please so by definition of dot products or scalar products the dot product or scalar products of two vectors is defined as the product of the magnitude of one of the vector with the magnitude of the component of the other vector along the first one correct read out once again it is the defined as the product of the magnitude of one of the vector the magnitude of one of the vector a vector dot b vector can be equal to the product of the magnitude of one of the vector let it be a okay multiplying with uh, multiplying with the magnitude of the component of the other vector along the first one so now i need to take the component of the other vector along the first one so if i take the component of b vector along the first one so that comes out to be b cos theta correct so the ma magnitude of the component of other vector along the first one so other vector is b vector its component is b cos theta right so a multiplied by b cos theta this is what have what i am having a vector dot b vector so dot product of two vectors is simply given by ab cos theta where ab are their a and b are their respective magnitudes and theta is the angle between a vector and b vector. correct so that is how i can define the dot product or scalar product of two vectors correct in the same way suppose i am having a vector like that and i am having b vector like that angle between them is theta right and suppose if i am going to define a b vector cross b vector dot a vector so b vector dot a vector b vector dot b a vector means the magnitude of one of the force so let it be b multiplied by the component of the other vector along the first vector so if i take the component of a vector along this so that is also comes out to be a cos theta correct so b multiplied by a cos theta 
so it means that b vector dot a vector can also be equal to a b cos theta correct so from this data we can simply say that a vector dot b vector must be equal to b vector dot a vector correct so that is what we can also define it. all right so is it clear perfectly what is the dot product of two vectors dot product of two vectors is simply given by a b cos theta where theta is the angle between a vector and b vectors okay or b vector dot a vector is also a b cos theta and output quantity is a scalar quantity so this is a scalar quantity right so here we are having the special cases if two vectors are parallel right so a vector and a vectors are parallel to each other right so what is the angle between them so theta must be equal to 0 degree so a vector dot b vector so i should take the different vectors so let us suppose a vectors and b vectors right so a vector dot b vector must be equal to what a b cos 0 degrees so a vector dot b vector must be equal to only a b so if two vectors are parallel then their dot products will be simply uh, and an angle between them is zero degree they are parallels so the dot product is simply given by a into b magnitudes of two product of the magnitudes of two vectors okay so by this example i can simply say that i cap dot i cap i cap dot i cap means i cap is also along x axis i cap is also along x axis so what is their magnitudes they are the unit vectors right along x axis so magnitude is simply 1 multiply by 1 into cos 0 so that is also going to be 1 in the same way j cap dot j cap is also be 1 in the same way k cap dot k cap is also be 1 correct so if two vectors are parallel their product dot product will going to be only a and a into b right next case when two vectors are anti-parallel, suppose a vectors and b vector, right? So theta must be equal to what? 180 degrees. So what is the dot product? a vector dot b vector must be equal to, yeah. And cos 180 is what? It is going to be simply minus 1. So it is a b cos 180. So that is equal to minus of a b. Correct? The two vectors are anti-parallel. Their dot is simply given by minus of a b. right okay next one when two vectors are perpendicular so theta must be equal to 90 and cos 90 must be equal to 0 correct so it means that a vector suppose this is a vector and this is what this is b vector so a vector dot b vector must be equal to 0 so if two vectors are perpendicular the dot must be 0 okay so we can say that i cap dot j cap must be zero j cap dot k cap must be zero and i cap dot k cap must also be zero so this also you have to remember correct next we will calculate to find a dot product of two vectors okay so let us suppose i am having a vector equal to a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap and b vectors is equal to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap so if i want to do a vector dot b vector so that is simply given by see uh, in multiplication okay we have already seen that i cap dot j cap is zero j cap dot k cap is zero and k cap dot i cap is zero right so it means we will multiply only i cap to i cap j cap to j cap and k cap to k cap components right so if i multiply the first one so it is going to be equal to a1 b1 i cap dot i cap a1 b1 i cap dot i cap correct plus a2 b2 so a2 b2 j cap dot j cap right plus a3 b3 k cap dot k cap correct so i cap dot i cap is 1 j cap dot j cap is 1 k cap dot k cap is 1 so a vector dot b vector is simply given by 
ए वन बी वन प्लस ए टू बी टू प्लस ए थ्री बी थ्री करेक्ट सो दैट इज ऑल कैन कैलकुलेट द ए वैक्टर डॉट बी वैक्टर ओके सिंपली आई कैप टू आई कैप जे कैप टू जे कैप के कैप टू के कैप एंड दैट इज हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट द स्केल प्रोडक्टर टू वैक्टर्स करेक्ट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम गोइंग टू हैव ए वैक्टर इज इक्वल टू टू आई कैप प्लस थ्री जे कैप प्लस के कैप एंड बी वैक्टर इज इक्वल टू थ्री आई कैप प्लस टू जे कैप माइनस फोर के कैप राइट एंड आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट ए वैक्टर डॉट बी वैक्टर राइट सो वट आई विल डू आई विल सिंपली मल्टीप्लाई आई कैप टू आई कैप जे कैप टू जे कैप एंड के कैप टू के कैप राइट सो आई कैप टू आई कैप मीन्स थ्री टू सिक्स प्लस के कैप टू के कैप मीन्स थ्री टू सिक्स एंड वन मल्टीप्लाई बाय माइनस फोर सो वन मल्टीप्लाई बाय माइनस फोर इज माइनस ऑफ करेक्ट बिकॉज के कैप्स कोफिशियंट इज वन एंड हेयर के कैप कोफिशियंट इज माइनस फोर सो वन मल्टीप्लाई बाय माइनस फोर इज माइनस फोर करेक्ट सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू एट सो ए वैक्टर डॉट बी वैक्टर सिंपली ए वन बाय आई कैप मल्टीप्लाई बाय आई कैप कंपोनेंट जे के कंपोनेंट मल्टीप्लाई बाय जे के कंपोनेंट के के कंपोनेंट मल्टीप्लाई बाय के क्या कंपोनेंट्स लाइक दैट राइट नेक्स्ट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ डॉट प्रोडक्ट इज टू फाइंड द एंगल बिटवीन टू वैक्टर्स ओके सो रिमेंबर दैट ए वैक्टर डॉट बी वैक्टर इज सिंपली गिवन बाय ए बी कॉस थिएटर राइट सपोज ए वैक्टर एंड बी वैक्टर्स आर सिंपली हैविंग सम एंगल थीटर बिटवीन दम सो cos theta can be simply equal to a vector dot b vector divided by ab correct so for example suppose a vector is equal to i cap plus j cap b vector is equal to 3 i cap plus 4 j cap correct and i need to find out the angle between a vector and b vector try to find the angle between a vector and b vector okay so how i can calculate that to find the angle between a vector and b vector what is that cos theta must be equal to a vector dot b vector upon a correct so first of all i need to calculate a vector dot b vector so a vector dot b vector is calculated to how i cap multiplied by i cap j cap to j cap so 1 multiplied by 3 is 3 1 multiplied by 4 is four so that is going to be seven correct and ab ab means magnitude of a so magnitude of a is given by this please under root of one cos square plus one cos square so it is going to be root two and b is magnitude is given by under root of d cos square plus four cos square that is root twenty five that is root five correct so cos theta is simply given by a vector dot b vector it is 7 upon ab so ab is going to be root 2 into root 5 correct so cos theta can be equal to 7 by root 10 implied theta can be equal to cos inverse of 7 by Here. So that is how we can calculate the angle between the two vectors. Correct. All right. Next, we will going to have the applications of dot product. Right. So dot product's application is to find the work done. Okay. So suppose you are having a box with you, and suppose you are having a force you have applied to the box at vector. And suppose displacement to this particular box will be d vector, right? And suppose angle between them is theta. Okay, so work done by your force is simply given by f vector dot d vector. Work done is simply given by f vector dot b d vector is the dot product of two vectors, correct? So for example, suppose you are having a box, okay, and you have applied a force f vector to be equal to Y cap plus three J cap newtons. 
and the displacement values we're going to be equal to uh, 3i cap minus uh, j cap meters, right? And you are required to find out the work done, correct? So work done is simply what? F vector dot d vector. So that is simply given by F vector dot d vector means i cap 2 i cap, j cap 2 j cap. So 2 multiplied by 3, 3 is a 6. 3 multiplied by minus 1, so it is minus 3. That is equal to 3 joules. What is the assignment of work done? That is simply joules. Correct. Next you to see is about the cross product of two vectors. Okay. So cross product of two vectors, so first of all, you should remember that cross product of two vectors is also a vector. Okay. And direction is given by the right hand thumb rule. Direction is given by the right hand thumb rule. So what is the right hand thumb rule? If you move your curled fingers of right hand, if you just listen to this statement again and again, if you move your curled fingers of your right hand from one vector to another vector, then thumb will give you the direction of A vector cross B vector. Correct? So if you move the thumb of your right hand from A vector to B vector, okay, so thumb will indicate direction of A vector cross B vector. Correct? So that is how, first of all, you will give the direction of A vector cross B vector. Okay? And what about its magnitude? Magnitude will be simply the area of this particular parallelogram. So A vector cross B vector's magnitude is simply given by AB sin theta. The magnitude of A vector cross B vector is simply given by AB sin theta. And what is the main point? A vector cross B vector is also perpendicular to A vector. And A vector cross B vector is also perpendicular to B vector. Right? So I can say that A vector cross B vector is actually perpendicular to the plane of A vector and B vector. Correct? So the cross part of two vectors must be perpendicular to the plane of the two vectors itself. Okay. And magnitude is simply given by what? A V sine theta. That is the area of the parallelogram uh, produced uh, of which the two vectors are the adjacent sides. Correct? So I think direction rule I have already told you how to do directions. Simply if you move from your curled fingers of right hand from one vector to A vector to B vector then thumb will indicate direction of A vector cross B vector. Correct? Special cases, so when vectors are parallel to each other, so theta must be equal to zero. Okay, so A vector cross B vector must be equal to, magnitude must be equal to what? A B sine theta, so A B sine zero, so it is going to be the same. So A vector cross B vector must be zero if two vectors are parallel to each other correct so it means that i cap dot i cap must be zero j cap dot j cap must be zero and k cap dot k cap must be zero all right vectors are anti parallel then theta must be equal to 180 degree and sine 180 is also zero, right? So it means that the dot product cross product must be zero. So A vector cross B vector must be zero. Correct. Next, when two vectors are perpendicular, A vector and B vector, right? So now we can have the cross product. So A vector cross B vector's magnitude can be equal to theta will be ninety. So sine 90 will be 1. So it is simply only A. So A vector cross B vector's magnitude is simply only A. Correct? So that is how we can have the special cases. Okay. Next we will calculate the vector product of two vectors. Okay. Cross product of two vectors. How to calculate it? So remember that it can be calculated like that. Okay, suppose you are having a A vector like that, 2i cap plus 3j cap minus k cap. And B vector suppose is equal to uh, i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap, right? 
so now if you want to calculate the cross product you want to calculate the cross product then a vector cross b vector is simply given by so it can be given by the help of a determinant okay it can be given by the help of a determinant so let's see how to calculate it so we are having three uh, coefficients that is i cap j cap and k cap so first of all write down i cap j cap and k cap then what is the first term that is a vector right so now write down the all the elements of a vector so i cap component is 2 j cap component of a vector is 3 and k cap component of a vector is minus 1 and then write down the components of the second vector that is b vector so that is b vectors component is 1 j cap component is 2 and k cap is 3 correct now how to calculate it so to calculate it first of all you have to pick up the upper term okay so remember that uh, the upper term is picked up with proper sign convention so first of all allow the sign convention and sign convention must be alternatively positive and negative so remember that sign convention will be positive negative positive okay so first of all we will allocate the upper term and upper term must be put up with proper sign conventions okay so that is going to be equal to upper term is put up with proper sign that is plus i cap correct so now just hide this row and hide this column okay so you are left with uh, four elements three minus one two three okay so the procedure of calculating the value of this is just multiply this term to this term minus of multiply this term to this term correct have you got it right so I'm just putting up the plus i cap then hiding the rows and the column of this i cap okay so i'm getting three minus one two three so three multiplied by three so three multiplied by three is going to be nine correct minus of two multiplied by minus one right so minus of two multiplied by minus one. correct so this is the my first term completes okay now i will just pick up the second term Okay, so second term is also picked up with proper sign conventions. Correct. So second term is what? J cap, but it is picked up with proper sign conventions. It is minus of J cap. Correct. Now again, what we will do? Mm -hmm. What we will do in the case of seconds? So again, just hide the column and hide the row. So what you are getting? 2 minus 1, 1, 3. Again, same procedure. Multiply 2 multiply by 3 minus of 1 multiply by minus 1. Correct. So now what happens? Minus j cap 2 multiply by 3 is 6. Minus 1 multiply by minus 1 is minus 1. Correct. Now we will pick up the third one. Okay. So third one is also picked up with proper sign convention that is plus k cap. Correct. So third one will be plus k cap. Okay. Now again, what you will do? Hide the row and hide the column. Correct. So what you are getting? 2, 3, 1, 2. So again, 2 multiply by 2 minus of 1 multiply by 3. Correct. So that is, we are going to have 2 multiply by 2 is 4 minus of 1 multiply by 3 is 3. So now just calculate its value. So it is going to be i cap. This is 9 plus 2 is 7 okay minus j cap 6 plus 1 is 7 and 4 minus 3 is 1 so plus 1 k cap correct so that is going to be 7 i cap minus 7 j cap oh, oh, oh sorry 9 minus of minus 2 so 9 minus of minus 2 is 9 plus 2 that is 11 right so that is going to be 11 what's up Okay, so 11 i cap minus 7 j cap and plus k cap. So that is what I am having a vector cross b vector, and this is how we can calculate it practically. Correct. Okay, and one more property you should remember is that a vector cross b vector is always equal to minus of b vector cross a vector this property you should remember correct 
so this is how we can proceed on with the second lecture of vectors okay so i hope that you will understand the vectors very well and this is all about the basic vectors which is going to be useful for physics all right so just revise both the lectures of vectors the first lecture and the second one very well okay and you will going to have all the clearation all the concepts and all the numericals based on your particular section of vectors okay and that will also be useful for you for if you preparing for the exams competitive exams like ge mains 11th okay and uh, neat okay so this will definitely being helpful for you okay and just write down your queries your doubts and your comments over there on this particular video and uh, also let me know that what is to be added and what is to be subtracted from that okay and just write down your reviews about it all right okay everyone see you in the next class next video up to that good night goodbye